start my screen share. And I will be sharing my screen. Uh, you will not have audio because of that. Uh, however, that should be fine. There's nothing that you particularly need audio for. I'm going to invite some people. So, to start off with, does anyone have any questions or something in particular that they have always wondered about? From Hots. Uh, that you think I might not touch upon in my talk. I'm trying to think of anything oddly specific. All right, seems like an oven. So <laughs> you might notice this is not HOTS. This is HOTS. But this is StarCraft 2. However, StarCraft 2 and Heroes of the Storm are in fact the exact same thing. In fact, Heroes of the Storm back in 2012, I believe, started off as a custom map for StarCraft 2 made by the StarCraft 2 development team. Uh, or a branch of, and eventually got developed into its own game, which got released into Open Alpha in 2014, and eventually got a full release in 2015 with the Jahanna release during the Eternal Conflict event. But under the hood, both games work the same. And uh, the thing that I want to talk about first is how does the game run? Like, how often, how fast does the game do things? So I'm going to show you the trigger editor. And I have one thing in here which says, every one hundredth of a second, add one to this variable. And every second, tell me what that variable is. Now, does anyone know what this will print every second. Also, if anyone is unfamiliar with any terms or does not uh, understand anything, you're not stupid. Just ask me and I will try to clar clarify because I do want uh, everyone to understand what I'm saying. So does anyone want to take a guess? Every one one hundredth of a second, I add to this variable and every second I print it. So that'll be, uh, what's the starting point of the variable? Is it zero or one? Is it zero? It is zero. Is it the clock time the... in the game? Mm-hmm. 9900, uh, 99 through 99 then? Mm-hmm. That is what you would expect, and that would be a reasonable guess. However, if I start the game, which I can do by pressing on this button, you will see that is actually not the case. 16, 32, 48, 64. Why is this adding only... Why is this only printing every 16? Does anyone happen to know that? Because the game can't keep up with one 100 for the second? Mm-hmm. So 16 took a second, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So the way, the way HOTS works is that it only does something under the hood, you know, tell a unit to move, do something, update a variable, etc. every one sixteenth of a second. We call that the, the hertz or the tick rate of the game. So a lot of things in HOTS can only update every one sixteenth of a second or in multiples of that number. This is why Tracer can only have up to 16 attack speed maximum in the game because she can only attack once every 16 seconds because that is how fast the game updates. So even if she were to get more attack speed by, say, combining Bloodlust and, Nano, uh, and Stimdrone, she would get more than 100% attack speed boost, but she will be limited to 16 attacks per second because of this 16 second update time. There is one... Uh, there are a couple of other things that this affects, uh, such as Li Ming, her Disintegrate, 
says dealing 480 damage over 2.6 seconds. But what this actually does, and you, uh, a lot of people probably know this, is that Disintegrate damages 16 times per second. And it is one of the highest, fastest attacking things in the game. Which is, is why, why deflecting uh, Disintegrate does so much damage. Is this why uh, Disintegrate has that weird interaction with Garrosh uh, trait, where it actually damages them for full before the armor can keep up? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good uh, example that I will go into in a little bit, and that is how Garrosh trait works. Because unlike what you would expect, Garrosh's trait does not uh, calculate its armor every time he gets damage. Instead, it updates it on a set amount of time, which I will show to you in a little bit with the XML files once we get into that. Okay. So, the game updates every 16th, every 1 16th of a second. Uh, wait. Ticks. <laughs> Off. There we go. Now, a Marine in StarCraft 2 can attack. Yes? Mm -hmm. When a Marine attacks and it fires its weapon, at what tick would you expect the Marine to fire its weapon and to attack? And deal its damage, that is. Uh. And... Wait, so I'm still uh, adding uh, one to this value that started at zero. Every t uh, tick the game updates here. If I attack this Marine, I have a trigger here that will say when that Marine fired. So the Marine fired on tick 1612, and this unit took damage on the exact same frame. Now the Marauder, unlike the Marine, does not instantly damage a unit in the game. So when the Marauder attacks, it fires, and six frames later, its shot actually hit. Now I have a question, which is, when the Marauder is in complete melee range of another Marauder, what do you expect this delay to be? Probably the same. Probably minimum 16th of a second. So at maximum range, or at very maximum range, it is seven game ticks. At half range, it was four. And now in melee, it is not one, but two. Does anyone know why that is? The animation to fire and the animation to land? Mm hmm. Close, actually. So, when the Marauder launches its, its, its attack, its missile, it actually creates a separate unit that goes out into the world. However, this unit needs one game tick to start moving, and then one game tick to arrive at its target. And then another game tick to actually hit its target. Now the first uh, game tick where it gets created is included in when the Marauder fires, which is why we get to two. Hmm. However, all of these game tick uh, numbers here are actually off by one. And why is that? Why would it be off by one? What well, sounds like by your description, there's always a tick missing from the animation to fire. Uh, sorry, this is not related to the Marauder anymore. Oh, okay, okay. It's a tick and tick uh, display. Yeah, it is because of the display. And the display is always off by one. Does anyone happen to know why? Else I will uh, go into it. Uh, in just a bit. Well, it's my display. Is that? Uh... It, it 
does have to do with lockstep. Uh, however, this is actually this one tick delay or one sixteenth delay is because of nearly every bug in Heroes of the Storm related to off by one sixteenth, and that is that this system, the entire trigger system, when I say, uh, when I ask, hey, do this when a marine does damage, when effect marine golf rifle damage, it takes 1 16th of a second for this to kick in. However, if this same chain of events happens inside of a unit itself and in what we call the data editor which contains all of the information for every unit every chain of events that a unit can create on its own such as the marauder launching a missile which is not related to the trigger editor at all this these are two separate systems this lets me easily define hey if this happens let me do this and this lets me define a marine has 45 health and it has a weapon and that weapon does so much damage. Six. These two systems have a 1 16th delay, which is why the Marauder only has two ticks of delay. I don't think I'm making sense here to you, am I? No, you are. Uh, following. So, but in any case, what it means is that if I were to, in a trigger, say, hey, if my Marine, when he attacks, in fact, I can even showcase this. Uh, kill unit. If a Marine attacks, What was the command to turn that off? It ticks off. When this marine attacks, I tell the trigger to kill this marauder. So my marine will be attacking this marine, but the bottom left marauder will die. But if we take the game speed all the way to the very slowest possible, you will notice that the top right marine will get damaged be damaged for one frame before this marauder dies. Now that's very hard to see. Oh, I think we got it. We saw that marauder get damaged in the... Yeah. Agreed, sorry. So whenever in this editor we say, hey, if something happens, like an effect, yeah. do something it has a 1 16th delay the trigger editor was used very very lightly in Starcraft 2 itself only for campaign maps and basically not at all for multiplayer where you know units uh, were mainly fighting each other and all of the reactions had to be very tight however a lot of things that are hard to do in the data editor can be easy to do in the trigger editor. And one of the examples here is Samuro. When Samuro, bring it back to hot. When Samuro uses Hearthstone, or rather when he finishes Hearthstone, there is a trigger that says, kill all of Samuro's clones. You made it to him? No, he's, I think he's just trying to show that it killed him. So, so these clones should have, still have a two second uh, duration, but all of my clones instantly get killed when I Hearthstone. However, because of what I just showed you, the trigger editor was used to kill Samuro's clones. There is a 1 16th delay in the game where his clones are not yet killed. However, when we use the Q system in HOTS, 
where we can queue up multiple commands. These queued commands do not have a delay between them. And that is why, as Samuro, we can mirror image hearth, press shift, queue up an image transmission, uh, uh, a swap onto a clone, and swap with the clone directly after hearthstoning. This 1 16th delay is directly responsible for that interaction. So is the health gain from hearthstone not a trigger itself? Mm hmm. The health gain from hearthstone is actually baked into the Hearthstone ability itself, and it is a static 1,125. Choose a talent. So Samuro's never actually in the... F he's never actually in the fountain, he's just gaining the health from the Hearthstone trigger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is exactly uh, how the Hearth trick works. Oh, okay. And there is, is one... Is that also why Stukov is now, <laughs> now eliminated from the game mm -hmm. for the weekend? Uh, <laughs> uh Stukov? is not actually directly related to the trigger editor, but uh, mm -hmm. the reason Stukov is currently, as of this moment, banned in the game completely, in every mode, is because you can do a very certain trick with him. And that is, you can detonate the same healing pathogen, Stukov's healing ability, twice. Because... When we use Reactive Ballista Spores, which is with data, not the trigger editor, mm -hmm. it resets bio kill switches cooldown. Now this is not done in data, which means there is zero delay between the interaction here. Mm -hmm. So if we were to press bio kill switch, very quickly press reactive ballista spores, and very quickly press bio kill switch again, mm -hmm. we could detonate a healing pathogen twice. However... Is removing the healing pathogen in the triggers through the switch? Um, the healing pathogen is actually not removed by triggers. However, Blizzard decided to keep it lingering for 1 16th of a second after being detonated. For the stupidest of reasons, <laughs> because of the talent that got removed in beta. Before he got released. So therefore, when we self-cast healing pathogen, we queue up D, 1, D. We detonate the same healing pathogen twice and basically full heal ourselves and our entire team at the same time. This is the, uh, sorry. This is why Stukov is currently banned. And it's not even that hard to pull off. If you know how. It is also yeah. how the old Imperius bug worked, where you could infinitely cast Angelic Arminence's recast, which was oh, very yeah. stupid. Is the triple weird pestle detonation related to the trigger editor? Or is that a... Uh, no, that is also thing. not a trigger editor related bug. However, there is one more bug that I want to show to you. Uh, after which I want to dive... Uh, not yet into how to edit the game, but in how we can find what makes this ability tick. Which will get a bit complicated. Uh, and that is... First of all, I will show you how to do this. Wait, did I? Uh, okay, wait a sec. So, I am currently in the base ass try mode. I renamed this folder, and I will rename it back to maps, which will load my custom try mode. I will show this in just a bit, how you can do this yourself. And I have something called the debug library enabled, which lets me type this, and the menu pops up. This is the same menu, that the HOTS, ed, uh, the HOTS developers uses themselves to debug their game in various ways. I will also type dash AI all off. The Arthas AI will get disabled. And I will set this to level 10. And now I get to control Arthas. This is the same menu you have uh, Chogol Vomit Rainbows, right? Mm, could be. Okay. Uh, so the bug is I want to showcase is that Counter-Strike, usually, when Alarak gets damaged... Actually, let's showcase that. When Alarak gets damaged, you will launch a Shockwave that does damage. However, guess what? The way that Counter-Strike works is when Alarak receives damage, there is a trigger that checks 
if his damage was from player 1 to player 10, which are the 10 playable hero slots in the game. If they are from player 1 to 14, which are the remaining player slots, they are either from mercenaries, from the minions, or from the other side of minions. But player 1 to player 10 are always heroes. But, and if the attack is from, a play, from player 1 to player 10, it adds an effect to Alarak, which says, hey, your Counter-Strike now should explode and deal damage. Now, you've probably never, uh, you might have noticed this, but if that means, because there is a 116th delay there, if Alarak takes damage in the last tick of Counter-Strike, the animation triggers, but he does not launch a damaging shockwave. And I will hope to showcase this. It is a fairly precise timing. Alright. You didn't hear it, but the laugh played for me. Yeah, you will be able to see this in the VOD. Yeah. And you will see an uh, animation on Alarak, the like, um, the, the red thing. See? That gets added to him when Counter-Strike is ready to fire, as well as a laugh. However, as you saw, the, the first two times, he did not launch a damaging shockwave. This bug is because of the trigger editor again. And I actually want to showcase what that looks like in code. So, if we go to Google, and we Google Cask View, this, uh, you might want to follow along at this point. I will start over again at the point where we start modding the game. Cask View lets you look at the data files for uh, used in basically every Blizzard game including Heroes of the Storm. So if we download Cask View, we run the x64 version because I have a 64-bit version of Windows, and we open Heroes of the Storm. It will take a while to check a lot of files, and then we will get a big old list of stuff. Core.StormMod, Gameplay Mod, Heroes.StormMod, etc. And in here, we can find hero mods. And now hero mods, not every hero has its own hero mods. Mostly the heroes released early on in HOTS are all in one big mod. But the, uh, the later hero mods, basically everything after like Alarak-ish, I want to say, or Trogol-ish. Uh, yeah, everything after Trogol-ish is separated into its own sectioned box. And here we have Alarak.StormMod. And then we will have a lot of things, base and ENUS, ENES, ESMX. All of these, these storm datas, are all of the data related to different languages. So different localizations. If we open up ENUS.StormData, we will see it has one folder, localized data. Then it has conversation strings and game strings. Conversation strings are all of the things that Alarak says. His name is Alarak. He says, your core is under attack. Are you allowing them to assail your core? As an announcer, if we scroll more down, is this the best healing you can do? Everything Alarak says in the game is in here as an English string. And for the other languages, as a different language string. However, the one, uh, the one you're usually more interested in is game strings, which are what actually shows up in-game. For example, Counter-Strike, uh, Alarak targets a channel area. So if we search Alarak targets a target area, we do not find it. Oh, because he says an area. Here we go. 
And we will see button slash tooltip slash Alarak counter strike second heroic. This is the one that takes over his tooltip button. And we have counter strike targeted. And you'll see you that there's a lot of nonsense here. Because when we update the actual data, for example, the 275 damage, it automatically gets updated in this tooltip. So Blizzard does not have to update this tooltip every single time. When they edit uh, anything in the game. But that's enough about the localization. What we're really interested in is base.storm data, which has game data. Cutscenes you can ignore and UI you can ignore. Game data has a couple of interesting things, but the most interesting is Alarak data.xml. And this is a very big file which contains basically everything that Alarak is. So if we search telekinesis, we find C Abel effect target, which stands for C uh, stands uh, stands in front of everything. Abel ability effect target with the name of Alarak Telekinesis. I do see you. And here we see certain things such as Telekinesis costs energy, 30 energy, it has cooldown of 12, it has a range of 8. It then has an effect. Alarak Telekinesis cast set, which then cascades into a lot more complicated stuff. What we're interested in is Counter-Strike, not the game, I don't like the game, sorry. And I'm, what I'm going to do is this is how I normally go through a list. You don't have to follow this step along, but you might want to rewatch this. This is how I normally find bugs in Heroes of the Storm, is by following the chain of effects that happens with an ability. So Alarak Counter-Strike targeted. I'm gonna, uh, it has an effect. An effect is what the ability does. And I'm gonna search that effect. I found it. And it has two effects, fail set and proc persistent. Now what does proc persistent do? It checks to see, does Alarak have Counter-Strike ready? It is a create persistent. This is going very deep into what the game is, but it has a validator. Alarak has Counter-Strike ready. And Alarak has Counter-Strike ready, checks for a certain behavior. A behavior is something that can be on a unit. But if we check for behavior, the Alarak Counter-Strike ready behavior, we can see it is applied by Alarak Counter-Strike apply ready behavior, which is an effect. Which is on Alarak Counter-Strike proc set. However, something weird happens. I'm searching Alarak Counter-Strike proc set and it is nowhere in my file. Does anyone know why? Because it's in the trigger menu? Because it's in the triggers. So... Where are the triggers? Did Blizzard move the triggers somewhere else? Are you joking? Oh, no, it's over here. Lip H Ala, which stands for Alarak. Now, I want to open this not with the StarCraft 2 editor because that's stupid, but I want to open it in Notepad. And this is this. However, this is a lot less readable to a human because this is the human readable form. But it has a human unreadable form, which we can see here. And as you can see, this and this have the same form. Right? So anyway, let's search Alarak Counter-Strike proc set here. 
This adds an event. Very cool. What language is this in? This is in Blizzard's very own language called Galaxy Script. I do see you, you know. It seems standard enough. It is quite standard if you know how to read coding stuff. Yeah. Uh, but Hero, Alarak, Counter-Strike, Damage, Response, Proc. It basically checks, does the event come from uh, the list of players which uh, this is actually just a variable that is 10. What are you doing? If true, it creates the Alarak Counter-Strike Apply Ready Behavior. Which, as we just found... Uh, here. Let's Alarak execute his attack. Unless, of course... Alarak gets this behavior applied to him without being ready to fire his missile because he already tried to because of his 116th delay. I didn't even get to into networking before here. Um, I have a question to everyone. Please tell me what you would rather have. I could go into A the networking of the game, which uh, explains something such as why is reconnecting absolute garbage? Or go into how to mod the game. I'd love to hear about networking personally. I'd like to hear about networking also. Uh, I'm going to go into dev day questions and I'm going to make a vote here. I'm going to make a thumbs up. Uh, actually, no, wait, a oh, one. And a two. Networking and modding. You can vote both. Just vote whichever you would like to hear. <laughs> yeah. I've got fairly so, close. So those values you were talking about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the specific uh, character values or hero values for things like energy costs and mm -hmm. ranges and damages and all of that. Is that something that is handled client side? Yes. Um, because... So the way StarCraft 2 and by extension Heroes of the Storm, Heroes of the Storm's networking works, is that every client simulates the game by itself. So what that means is that when, for example, uh, let's use StarCraft 2 because it is slightly simpler. When a Marine moves, what is actually sent over the network is that player 1, because I am player 1 in this instance, sent the move command to this specific Marine. The Marine has a specific code uh, that only belongs to it to add this place on the map and that is the only thing being sent over the network yeah that makes a lot of sense and, and so then every single game every single client you know every other player connected to the game also hears hey player one use the move command on the marine at this location I do see and then every client has to think for itself and say, hey, that marine would start moving here, its pathing would take it here, it would engage an enemy here, and every client does that separately. And Now that's interesting because... Mm -hmm. does, okay, so let's, let's take an example of um, hitting an enemy with a skill shot, right? Mm-hmm. If my client gets a, a command from an enemy, right? So mm -hmm. an enemy hero that says move here. And on my client, I can, uh, you know, it comes in a bit later than on the enemy's client, of course. Ah, he's but, the one issuing. but here's the trick. It does not come in later on either client. Because when I tell my client to say, hey, Marine, move here, I send that uh, message to the game server owned by Blizzard, the game right. server. And the game server then says to every 
client connected to that game at once. Player one tried to move his marine to this location. Okay. Including your the client that sent that in the first place. So oh, this super. is why when you have 500 ping, every command you take has half a second delay because it uh, because the command does not get executed when you do it on your screen but when it reaches everyone's client at once yeah well when it reaches the server and then back to you really mm -hmm. yeah. no, that, that, and that, so that every everything you do has to make a round trip from you to the server back to you and it is very important, this is called a lockstep engine. It is very important that every client agrees on where every single thing is and every little detail that happened at every time step in the game. And this is part of the reason why the game only updates every 1 16th of a second, is to keep that uh, load on every single game equal. And that does not mean that the game cannot run at anything more than 16 FPS because the game does render, show you what is happening every, uh, every 1 60th of a second. It can like interpolate the positions, of course. Yes, yeah, so it will, it will show you, uh, uh, so if, if my Marine, for example, has very high movement speed and it move from here to here in one game tick, it would show that as gradual steps here, even though it would never actually be here. And it would be, go very fast, just to keep it smooth to the user seeing it. Oh, interesting. So let's say you were like some form of superhuman and you had like a really incredibly high frame rate and you would do it, use an ability that would hit that Marine halfway through its pathing and on your screen it would hit. The game server would be like, yeah, but you didn't actually hit because that unit wasn't there. Uh, the thing is, nothing moves that fast. Sure, but and, theoretically. Uh, yeah, that, that is a possibility if you get to extremely high values, but those are simply never used in the game. Well, but it does kind of answer another question I had, which is, um, let's say you change some of those values in those scripts you saw earlier. Like, let's, for instance, like the energy cost of an ability that you have. Mm -hmm. You can click that ability, and your tooltip might say that it uses 50 energy because ah, you changed it. No, to no, 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 energy. no. You cannot load into a game with a different set of values on your abilities or on your scripts. It checks all of them. It checks okay. everything. And as and soon as one thing is found, say, for, for example, your, uh, your game said, hey, this costs 29.99 energy and someone else's game said, no, it cost 30, the game immediately desyncs. It desynchronizes and every, um, the game gets forcefully disconnected. Or in the case that, you know, only one player has that, for example, in HOTS, you will get immediately banned for cheating because the only way to achieve that is memory hacking. Well, okay. So, client version mismatch? So. Yes, client version mismatch is uh, That's basically That's kind of crazy. I was thinking maybe the game server, because you're issuing the command to a server, would just be like, all right, so I know how much the energy disability costs. Subtract this amount from your uh, mana or whatever, or mm -hmm. energy. So there are two things the, the game server actually does. It passes along every single command I do see you, you that know. every player does. And it passes along a number that every client generates which corresponds to its game state. This is called a checksum, which you are probably familiar with. But a yep. checksum is basically, you grab everything in your game state, you do a fuck ton of math to it, you reduce it to a single number, and you send that over to every other client. And the game server checks, is every checksum the same? If not, desync. Yep. There is act and that's done every single tick yes. of the game? Yes, yes. Uh, it is not actually... Uh, uh, I don't believe the checksum is actually checked every single uh, game tick. I think it's checked like every one or five seconds, something like that. You would have to ask a Blizzard server engineer to get the exact value on that. And sadly, Wait. I do not work for Blizzard. 
Does that mean you can technically sort of exploit that? No, nope. uh, because as soon as you change one thing, it cascades into changing everything, and your oh, right. yep. your game yeah, state right. will just be different because your game yeah. state has to be the exact same, not the values on you know, the numbers on every ability, but where everything is, how much health everything has, how much energy everything has, all of that yeah. is checked. Uh, I do not recommend hacking your game uh, because the only way to do this, you cannot change your files locally because the game will just say, hey, these are not equal. Let me download the latest files from battle.net before launching the game, which is also why when hosting a custom lobby, for example, it will often even if you um, hosted that map, you know, two seconds ago, it will hang on downloading data for a bit. Just because it is double checking every single value, or not double checking, but the value, uh, the map, you know, say you're hosting Altrak Valley, the Altrak Valley that Blizzard says is the correct one is not the exact same as your correct one. Because Blizzard does not always update their maps in the client side uh, versus the uh, the one they have on their server, and the server is always correct in this in that case. But the one in your game files does not get overridden, so it has to be downloaded every single time. If that makes sense. It does, yeah. Uh, let's see, is there anything... Uh networking related that someone would like me to go into? I think I've covered everything. Basically, the thing is, everyone runs the game separately, but in a way that mathematically, everyone comes to the exact same conclusion because they have the exact same inputs. How does that work with random? abilities. Um, so how that works right. with random abilities and anything uh, related to randomness at all is that uh, a computer is never truly random. It cannot be because a computer is just a bunch of mathematical operations. It simulates randomness. However, the way that it simulates randomness is by having a certain number called a seed in its random number generator. And this seed is sent at the start of the game to every single client. And every time that the game generates a random number from a certain seed, it would uh, it will return the numbers, the random numbers, in the exact same order. So the first time you ask it for a random number, it would say three. The second time it would say seven. The third time it would say six. And it returns that those random numbers in the same order in every client the same way. But this does mean that if your client was modified in any way and asks for that random number even once, you would already be out of sync with the other users asking for random numbers and you would immediately get desynced because your randomness would already be not the same. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I remember the concept of seeding from just a layman's perspective back when I was like doing Pokemon stuff. You mm -hmm. found like a specific one and they'd give you that, but if you try to alter it with like a game shark or something, they would know immediately that it was fake because I, I guess that would be the reason. Mm -hmm. be That's actually really smart because again, this is one of those things you could just have the server tell all of your clients, but in this case, the clients that. also know automatically because of the seed. So it's kind of like a double system. Mm -hmm. And now the thing is, uh, a StarCraft 2 game, uh gets loaded into a replay, right? But in a replay, you cannot easily jump from... Uh, I don't have an action to find one with a replay. You cannot jump from point to point what are you doing? in a replay. It needs to uh, buffer it when you load into a replay in HOTS, right? Yeah. The reason for that is, is that just like a multiplayer game, it is recreating the entire the entire game action by action uh, sequentially so it just stores for every single game tick what input did every user have on every game tick and that is all the information that is stored in a replay that is everything 
And with that information, just like a multiplayer game is able to, you know, go from frame to next frame, it is able to recreate the exact same game uh, without knowing on frame 3307, Li Ming was on XY this. Because by following the exact same commands that every single player ga uh, gives, it comes to that same conclusion. It has to. Right. So it's more of like an X like an XML type script for the game. Uh, uh, it, it's just a of like a replay is just a big list of commands that every player gave it during that game, in which order on which frame. Yeah. Which is also why replays are so small. This replay. Uh, is one megabyte big. One megabyte is not a lot of information to work with when you have maps as big as HOTS with as much going on. Yeah, because it doesn't need to store any assets or anything. It just takes the game with its asset as assets, assets and then tells mm -hmm. it, hey, you know, play this out for me. However, that or does mean more. if, for example, Muradin's W was nerfed to, you know, cost 10, le uh, 10 more mana, yeah. A replay could not work because the game is is different, and that actually basically immediately causes the entire game state to fall apart. Because Murden did cast W in one place, so now someone survives, so now they get extra auto attacks off, but they didn't have any actions queued because they were dead in the real game, for example. And now the entire game has just gone to shit, and it's a completely different game already. And that is why you need to. You need to load an old version of Heroes of the Storm when you load old replays. Yeah. Because it needs to have the exact same data that that old version of the game had. I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, there's a lot of games that do this exact thing. Uh, also, mm -hmm. to, to save on, on space, an uh, easy example would be uh, Doom, for instance. They have these things called uh, demos. And this game is so old, and this is like one of the only games that's like recorded properly because we could make these small files back on the internet that didn't accept gigabytes of data. Uh, we could easily have replays like that. And uh, mm -hmm. Smash Brothers says this too, for instance. So, uh... And um, this, you know, every client has the exact same thing going on on the screen on the exact same frame, yeah. is also why HOTS never ever will have rubber banding or a hero, you know, teleporting around on the screen due to lag. Or the case where on your screen, it looked like an ability hit, but on the opponent's screen, they weren't there. That can happen in most FPSs because of the way they work. But in HOTS, that is not possible. If my W says that it will hit Arthas, it will hit Arthas. Unless it wouldn't hit, for example, because he moved out of it and it had a delay. But the exact same thing will always happen on both screens. And unlike Overwatch, for example, where you can get hooked across a wall because on their screen you were still, you know, not fully behind the wall, but on your screen you were, for example, it simply can't happen. Which is one of the big benefits. However, it also means that when you disconnect from a game and you're trying to load back into it, you are forced to replay the entire game from whichever point you load it into. Oh, right. And that is why it takes so long to reconnect into an existing game. Because your computer has to run the entire game step by step, just like a replay, up until the point where uh, the game currently is being played. Right, so does that mean if your computer is faster, it'll load back into the game faster? Or is there yes. a limit? Yes. Huh. The faster your computer is, the faster you will load back into a game. That is how HOTS reconnection system works. That's really interesting. Uh, however, the game also makes uh, a snapshot of the current state of the game every so often, which the server stores, which is uh, or and which is also stored locally. The one locally is uh, done a lot more often, which means that you don't have to start uh, the game from minute zero zero zero. If you had a one millisecond uh, DC and you just disconnected, you know, for half a second, you don't have to start the game over all the way from the beginning, even if your game was closed. Does it store the uh, the, the 
like checksum at that point? Or? Uh, no, not the checksum, just the entire game state. Oh, okay. That's that's good that they were doing that. Uh, and it does that every so often, but it can't do that every frame because that's then you lose all of your advantages of being a lockstep engine. Uh, this also means that a typical game of Hearts is very light on your bandwidth. And it is mainly ping, uh, not bandwidth, that uh, impacts your experience and how reliable, of course, your connection is. Even if it is weak, uh, it only takes like 8 megabytes to play an entire game of Hots. I actually think that's kind of impressive given that it does update everything from all 10 players 16 times per second. Mm -hmm. That's it also cool. does mean that if every player is clicking every frame, it actually has to send more data, and it is more impactful on the network. However, that is partly relevant. I think that is it for the networking part. If anyone has any questions left, please do ask. Um, the snapshots that you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, where you can load the game from... <sighs> Are those Lord only stored for live games? Like, is there, would there be a way to code that into replays such that you could actually skip around and not need to? They are already in replays. Uh, that is the catch here. If we uh, go uh, into a replay uh, and, you know, uh, we go to two minutes, so first the game has to, uh, you know, uh, simulate the entire game up to that point. There is a hotkey we have in the replay editor, which is to go back 30 seconds, or uh, a rough amount like that. So if I press B, you'll see that it took about five to six seconds of loading. That is because it made a snapshot around the two minute mark and it only had to simulate the, ne the next 10 seconds afterwards, up to this point. It took a lot longer to go from zero seconds to two minutes. So it's creating the snapshots as you go through the replay. They're, yes. They're not snapshots that are inherent to the replay file before yes. you start doing anything to it. Okay. So um, there's actually... Uh, If we go into here, uh, dot storm saves, all of these files, uh, you'll see this one is five minutes old. Uh, this is that snapshot. And you'll see it's under the uh, slash saves slash rejoin folder. So it's a potential rejoin point if you were to disconnect. Yes. And these files are basically just a game state. They are not human readable, as you can see. Completely hashed, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a very interesting system, they say. But, okay, so these files get discarded then at the end of watching the replay. Like, if you quit out of it, they are gone. Yes. Like uh, and for live, it, it will store them for a bit while that while that live game is still going on. Okay. And I, uh, good question though. Uh, any other questions? Uh, there's one in the chat. There the uh, dead day questions. There's one thing that I had desync from server is when I pick a talent when I lag, the talent is shown as picked on my side, but not on the server, so I can't pick the talent until the next level hits. That. Uh, okay, so what happens there, so that's a known bug, is that the talent UI is not directly linked to actually picking the talent. So when you click on the talent UI locally, it updates it locally before the server receives, oh, he picked this talent. And that updates locally because it is a local UI a uh, bit of information because the UI on your machine is not actually sent across the server. So basically, it does a call to the server but does not wait for the confirmation from the server before it disables the button. Yes, because else the UI on your screen would feel laggy. 
Gotcha. Because gotcha. then, you know, if you had half a second uh, ping, it would take half a second for your talent selection to go away, and you would be like, hey, that's buggy. Right. That makes sense. Do you know why lagging after the core is destroyed sometimes gives a loss? Because if you are disconnected at the moment the game decides, hey, this side won, you get a loss. That's just what the game does. It is, uh, Blizzard has decided that if you are disconnected, you get a loss even during a win. And it is very unfortunate when that happens during the exact frame when the game says, hey, you won. It's very stupid, I agree. Wait, but disconnecting during the game lets you rejoin. So yes, but if, if you are disconnected during the moment, the game ends. And right, okay, then it's like then it's like then it's like leaving queue or something like that. Yes, yes. Then you just okay. get a loss. Gotcha. Now I don't have that much time left for the official schedule. I will continue on for a bit, but I'm gonna stop the first recording here. Unless anyone still has a question, be quick. No. Okay. I'm gonna stop the first recording here.